Good afternoon, Sean here with Accelerators Organization, ready for another mentor session. Let's get this thing going. If you are a member of AO, you can submit a question in the portal at any time and us mentors will answer your question. If you're not a member of Accelerators Organization, just go to acceleratorsorg.com and we would love to mentor you in your business. Here we go. The first question today comes from Darby. And Darby says, what is the best way to get employee interaction? The background is we are constantly looking for ways to improve employee interaction, but it feels like it's pulling teeth. We try to create many days or many company days. We have photo shoots for magazine covers, random events, but as much as they say they want to do things, we get little to no interaction. Okay, Darby. I've got five other mentors answering this one for you, and I know that we answered this question in great detail at the leadership event uh, last weekend, but I still wanted to make sure and let a couple other mentors that were not at the event answer this question. There are lots of ways to get employees to uh, interact and engage in our companies. What I have found for me was the best way to, to get them to engage was to simply ask them things that they wanted to do. and then. Uh, and then do those things. It, it's very difficult, depending on the type of company, to get all of our employees together for an event or a meeting or things like that, especially when, when employees are so spread out or working different hours or different shifts. For instance, you know, in my last company, we, had, we were a 24 hour a day business and one big part of our company was our 24 hour call center. I couldn't pull people from our call center to come into mandated meetings or events because then there would be nobody manning the phones and we have customers calling 24 hours a day for support. And therefore it was impossible for us to do, do something that would require the entire company, if you will, even on holidays. And in when we were going to put things together, we tried to get the, the team members to be involved in the planning processes. We would, we would have one person and we would call them the champion of a particular event. And we would say, okay, you're going to champion this event. You're a team member, so they're, those team members that are members with that team member, they look at them as peers, as fellow teammates. For some reason, psychologically, when a teammate is trying to get a teammate to do something, sometimes it's a little bit more fun and easy than when it's the business owner or the manager or something. So getting the team members to champion ideas and social events and things like that can increase uh, interaction and engagement. And then I like to use surveys to find out what my team members want and what they like and what they don't like. And you can have blind surveys where people don't have to give their name and, and it's totally just you know blind or they can you can ask for a name. Uh, I always want to try to create a, a company environment of transparency and the ability for team members to voice their, their opinions and anything without fear of repercussion of getting fired and things like that. And that's a, that's a great thing when you can get to where your company is that way. Okay? All right. I hope that helps. The next question comes from Ricardo and Ricardo says, what are some good team building strategies we can use to continuously help my team work together and understand what we are doing? The background is I have a barber shop, and the only team building strategy I'm currently doing is one meeting per week, although I would like to add something that will challenge us and help us grow at the same time. Anything helps, thank you. Okay, I've got about five other mentors answering this one for you, Ricardo. Personally, and we talked about this at our last leadership weekend event here uh, in Nashville, and then we've talked at, at, at different events when, that you, I know, have been a part of. It's really important to do a daily, what's called a daily huddle. Uh, at the beginning of the shift usually with all of our team members and all it is and there's there's a, a strategy around this and I, I don't I don't teach this so it's I don't remember what it is but there are certain things to do and not do on these team meetings and I'm gonna have to try I, I have a couple people here um, that are gonna answer this question for you but on these team meetings it just lets people voice what's going on if there's any problems going on things like that I like to try to meet with everybody once a week and I'm going to look up this information. I'm going to put it in the Facebook group and I'm going to make sure I tag you because there is a, a way to follow how to run these morning meetings and 
I'm gonna get that information for you. I don't know it off the top of my head, and I don't wanna to try to make it up, so I'm gonna get it for you. But I would try to do something on a daily basis. Um, other team building strategies are to do things on the day off and maybe take people out to do some fun activity. Uh, that's always a great way to build uh, team strategies. And then also just ask your team. For them to feel like they're more involved in the company and they love working at, um, at your barbershop, what would they like to see? What are some suggestions that they would like to see in the, uh, in the space, equipment, furniture, fixtures, food, drinks, whatever? What would make it so they would feel more loyalty and team camaraderie? Ask them because people usually will tell you what they want if you, if you ask them to tell you. So try that and let us know how it goes, okay? Okay, the next question comes from... You missy and she says how do I know if you've done all you can to improve your business the background is we are a math tutoring business and have about 80 to 100 students we have remained flat things are still stagnant and we think we have looked at every aspect of our business from pricing to memberships to marketing to staff we just don't want to sell our business because of something we have overlooked and then things take off for the other owner. What are things we can do to help us get back to growth mode? Okay, I've got about 10 mentors answering this question for you. And you and I had a one-on-one -on -one phone call already and talked about this and you did not get back to me with what your marketing person said. So there's your accountability. We talked about you getting some information and getting back to me so I could help you with next steps and I'm just waiting on you now. I found, and I said this on our conversation and I'll say it for this video, I find it very, very difficult to believe that there are only 80 to 100 students in the entire area of which you offer tutoring that need math tutoring. That would tell me as a business owner that my marketing and sales efforts are not up to speed. And I would constantly be evaluating how can I get in front of more parents that make those decisions. I might try working with the schools themselves and the guidance counselors and the teachers, the PTA meetings. I would talk to every single school that's in my territory and find out what I could do as a business to help get my business and my service in front of more parents. Could I sponsor events? Could I be a guest speaker? What are some things that I could do? I would then also be involved in different parent Facebook groups and see if I could be a sponsor. I might even sponsor little league games and, and, and on basketball and soccer and football and get involved in the community. The more I get my company name out there with parents that I am the de facto amazing math tutoring business, the more they're gonna remember me when their students are not doing so great in math which I'm sure there's a lot that aren't that you could help. So that's what I would do. Highly doubt you have tried everything, and I think it's great that you're asking this question to try to figure out what you could be doing more of. Okay, the next question comes from Brad, and Brad says, what is an acceptable time frame for royalty payments paid to someone when acquiring a business? The background is my wife and I are looking to start a concession business. We have talked with someone that has been in the business for a while with an established name, and following and they are looking to exit the business they're offering us their name and associated things like light uh, logos graphic etc they're also willing to turn over any current contracts they have and contacts for other potential contracts and are asking for a small percentage in return there have been no discussions of length of time for the payments fee but i do feel it needs to have a limit what is an acceptable offer or what kind of limit years should we look at for entering such an agreement? If the contracts prove to be fruitful, I don't mind paying the fee, but feel it shouldn't be paid indefinitely. We are not buying any equipment or any physical location, basically just purchasing the name, logos, graphics, and contracts. Okay, I've got about seven other mentors answering this one for you. It's not enough information for me to really give you straightforward advice, and here's the reason why. What is, if you're just buying a logo and things like that, and there's no exist, you know, existing revenue or anything of value, why would you pay any money? 
like where is the value and what is the what is the price of the value that that it is that you're buying that's where i would start if they have contracts already in existence and then you get to take over those contracts and what i would do is make sure that the person that holds the contract on the other side you'd want to be able to go through some due diligence and contact those people to make sure that if you bought that contract that they would still keep it with you and they wouldn't put it out to bid because if you have an annual contract and the person you're buying this from says yeah last year we did a hundred thousand dollars in sales which was about twenty five thousand dollars in profit that's a twenty five thousand dollar value potentially or they might say it's a three-year contract so that's worth seventy five thousand dollars so we want to sell the business for seventy five thousand dollars we got to figure out what the value of the company is today so that then you could say okay if you are okay not being paid in a lump sum and getting paid over time if i am buying the company for let's say a hundred thousand dollars i will pay you that hundred thousand dollars over 10 equal payments of nine thousand x amount of dollars per month for 12 months and then you're taking the risk that those contracts are going to stay there that you're going to get more business and it's going to be worth it for you to pay out that ten thousand dollars so that's one way to look at it everything that you decide as far as the length and all those things that is completely arbitrary to what you are willing to do and what they are willing to take this is the world of negotiation that we live in i would ask them what they would want and then once you know what they want you then might ask a question and explain the scenario of what the valuation of the company is blah 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 and then re-ask a question and say how long should i take to pay this you might even say hey listen if you want a hundred thousand dollars for the business what if i paid the entire amount up front would you take sixty thousand would you take sixty thousand cash or hundred thousand over the first year sometimes you'd be surprised people would take the sixty thousand in cash leaving forty thousand dollars on the table sometimes burn the hand is worth two in the bush but all of this is pretty natural as far as far or it's all arbitrary and subjective to what you want to do and what they're willing because i could tell you man you got to do you only want to pay these these royalty payments or this purchase price extension for a payment plan for 12 months and they go no 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 i want two years i want three years so it doesn't matter what i tell you and what have you what you should do or shouldn't do it really depends on what they're going to take and this is part of negotiation is, is making an offer letting them counter you recountering or accepting and you go back and forth and back and forth but for me when i'm buying a business i want to know what i'm buying and what that worth is then we can start figuring out what the payment plan is whether it's a balloon payment or a payment plan over time all right I hope that helps, man. I hope that stirs up some more questions. Feel free to ask some more around that. And that is today's mentor session. Just you know, four or five questions and we are done. It's that easy. That's why I say go in there and ask more questions. Remember, you're going to get emailed your answers and then be able to watch it on the YouTube channel and you're all set and ready to go. All right. Peace out. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you on the next mentor session. Bye.